Hi, um, my name is Mark, and I'm going to give you a talk about Esolangs, except this talk was by Asa Zarin, who's my son, who's an eighth grader. And Esolangs are these funny things that look like this. Um, they're esoteric programming languages, sometimes called Turing tar pits. Uh, and these are what the, run, the real young kids are using today for their programming language, or designing today. Probably the best known one is something that they refer to in middle school as BF. Um, and you can see Hello World on the left and the instruction set down below it. And the goal here was to create a language with, that was super easy to compile. The first compiler was 240 bytes, and now most compilers are less than 200 bytes. It's probably the most famous SOLang um, and has spawned an entire family of SOLangs. Uh, the next one is the compiler language with no pronounceable acronym, which is, of course, called Intercal. Um, and this is claimed to fame as it's the oldest one. And one of the things I like about it is that it requires some degree of politeness. You must say please, but not too often, or it's a syntax error. <laughs> the next one is Befunge. And the goal here was to write the hardest to compile language. Um, and it, this is achieved by two-dimensional code. The direction of the instruction pointer is changed by the instructions on the bottom left. Um, it's, of course, self-modifying, uh, obviously. And um, it, it has, uh, there's actually a whole family of these in unidimensional, two-dimensional, and n-dimensional um, befunges. Um, so the next one is unlambda. And uh, this is a purely functional Turing uh, tar pit. Um, you know, much, the, the unlambda people scoff at Haskell and List and these other things. Um, and it's Turing complete with the backtick S and K instructions. Um, there are some other built-ins that make things a little easier to type, um, like the hello world up on the left. And my favorite quote here is that the, this is the worst thing to befall us since intercal. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is Pyat, which is named after Pyat Mondrian. And this uses images code. Groups of same color pixels transition to other groups, and the instruction is encoded in the change in color and intensity. Normally, Hello World might look like the top left, but if you're creative, you can make it look like the artist's paintings on the bottom right. Um, the next one is Malbunge, Budge, and this was the goal here was designed the hardest language to program in, and the first program was found by Beam Search using Lisp. Um, so. It, the, the instruction executed is determined by the instruction pointer plus the instruction, well, the, the data at the instruction pointer plus the instruction pointer mod 94, um, just to get started. Uh, and uh, it works on a virtual machine that uses trits instead of bits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the next one is Velato where um, the, the instructions are encoded in a MIDI file, and this has relatively straightforward control flow, it's a normal language, but it has the handy feature of being able to print out in score form. Um, some people say that it sounds a little bit like jazz. <laughs> the next one is white space, as you can see by the program on the left. <laughs> no relation to Python. Um, and then uh, the, uh, and the uh, highlighted version of uh, Hello World on the right. And of course, it's you know, implemented with three characters again, space, tab, and new line. Everything else is a comment, which is handy. <laughs> um, and the, the final one is Hopscotch. And this is a small language. The instructions are on the left. Um, it's a stack-based language. Um, and each command communicates with the next command through a single register. The integer literals are uh, relative jumps. Um, and of course, the interesting thing about this is this language was designed by Asa while documenting the other languages. Um, if you have interest in other languages, you can go to esolangs.org and you can look through. We can find he uh, entered, a, he entered a, an entry for hopscotch. If you look around, you might find some other frenemies. For example, uh, that one. <laughs> Thank you very much.